Okay, peace YouTube. This your man. I'm back at it again. And in today's video, we're going to come from this book called UFOs and the Nation of Islam, The Source, Proof, and Reality of the Wills. We're going to touch upon a couple of topics. Okay? And it's, it has occurred to me every time I use the Nation of Islam as a reference, uh, YouTube either uh, flags my video or they take it down. You know, that's become a common thing now. Okay? Now, we're going to go into some things and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what, what happened to me last night, what I, what I saw last night. About 11.30 when I was getting off work. And when I, when I saw the shit, people, the shit brought me to tears. I wasn't imagining anything. I wasn't on drugs. I was sober. Because I don't smoke or drink. So I know what the fuck I saw. Twice. Back to back. And it's funny how. When I, when I, what I saw last night. Is I found a big coincidence. When I put this video up. The day before. The next day. I see some shit. But let's go into this. So we got UFOs in the National Islam. Okay, so let's go here. Let's talk about these uh these grays, right? Cause we all we always been trained to to see this, right? Grays. But this is this is bullshit, man. This is this is garbage. They lying to you. This is this is trash. This is this is some bullshit to to, to, get, to keep you in fear. This old reptilian alien bullshit, whatever. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a lot of people who who, uh, who hold that theory and things like that. I don't subscribe to this bullshit. But just think about it. What the fuck were these greys at? Back in ancient times. What the fuck were these reptilians at? Back in ancient times. Bullshit. Okay, so let's get into it. It says on page 51, and he, he, just, he has everything uh, cited as references. If you can go look up on your own. Okay? So it says, no grays, maybe just gray suits. Since the UFO phenomenon became more popularized, the media portrayals of the beings associated with UFOs have often been portrayed as little greenish gray men with small slender frames, large heads, and huge dark eyes that will reflect something other than humans. These features have become heavily ingrained in the minds of the American public as it relates to the UFO occupants. These inhuman portrayals are frequently conveyed by the mainstream media for numerous reasons. Since UFO-related information is considered, quote, above top secret by the U.S. intelligence agency, it behooves them to deter the public from information that proves there is a power much greater than all their military forces combined. Therefore, the media, acting as an arm of U.S. intelligence, frequently spins and twists information about UFOs, its pilots, and its reality in order to, in order to sway the public. This is one of the primary reasons for the frequent portrayals of little greenish gray aliens that have now become dubbed as greys among ufologists. This, this bullshit. If there is credibility to what appears to be alien features of UFO pilots, there's a possibility that those features are actually the results of certain outfits or uniforms. Since the wheel or the mother plane, you know what I'm saying, uh, is capable of creating its own atmosphere, this man, this man-made planet can practically travel anywhere in space at once. Uh, it stands to reason that the humans aboard these craft wear clothing as other civilized persons do. There is a vague possibility that the outfits worn by these people could be purposely mistaken for so-called grays. After all, many abduction cases and researchers, researchers have described the UFO occupants as humans with grayish uniforms and outfits. Moreover, it is documented that the U.S. government has embarked on a disinformation campaign against both the 
National Islam, and the UFO reality. Could it be that the sudden push of the so-called grades is a part of this campaign to deter, to deter uh, the public from the truth? Uh, among few credible close encounter cases, some of them have described the inhabitants of the UFOs as wearing, as wearing form-fitted outfits. Take, for example, the adoption case of Antonio Viles Boas. Uh, this case is considered one of the first credible UFO abduction cases to which widespread uh, to to reach widespread attention. During his alleged October, October 16, 1957 encounter, uh, Antonio Boas recalled, "Quote." All of them wore a very tight, a very tight-fitting, uh, serene suit made of soft, thick, unevenly stripped gray material. This garment reached right up to their necks, where it was joined to a kind of helmet made of a gray material that looked stiffer and was strengthening back at the at the at nose level. There was no visible hem between the trousers and shoes, which were actually a continuation of the former, being part of the self-same garment. The tight-fitting grayish outfits that covered their entire body have been have uh, have a, have an uncanny resemblance to the extraterrestrial imagery that have permeated the media. Um. So they saying that they twisting this shit around. It, it, this is bullshit, man. These are these are black people. That's 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 these so called they, what they call them grays. These are black folks. It goes on to say that uh, he went on to say about that. So the, you see this this bullshit there. It's about their eyes, all that type of shit or whatever, right? So the, the man who's abducted, he says that Antonio mentioned that the uniform covered part of their body. Except for the two round lenses that cover their eyes, lenses that may seem their eyes almost uh, interminable. Um, as for those, uh, as for those huge elongated head, heads that have become properly identified with aliens, Boaz gave more details of his vivid experience. He said, above their eyes, those helmets look so tall that they corresponded to what the double of the size of a normal head should be. Probably there was something else hidden under those helmets, placed on top of their heads, but nothing could be seen from the outside. It says, big heads or big, or big, heads or big helmets. Is it far more reasonable to accept that humans in uniforms than to believe in, in make-believe monsters with big heads? Is it no wonder that cases like Boaz describe people in body forming suits with seemingly large headgear? When the occupants of attire, along with America's disinformation campaign, gets factored in, uh, it becomes understandable why the media has betrayed the human pilots as extraterrestrial aliens to the public. Besides make believe aliens, cannot hold American world governments accountable for their evil, especially against black people. Okay? Now, let's go down here. And you remember the, uh, you have the case with Travis Walton, right? So you have, um, you have, um, other notable, notable abductees such as Sid, Sid Patrick, Travis Walton, and, uh, President, uh, Kirshman, uh, Humanob clearly described the people not extraterrestrial aliens. The famous Travis Walton abduction case of 1975 illustrated that human beings were in control of these planes. He says, Walton writes, quote, I whirled around and looked at the door. There standing in the open doorway was a human being. So here he goes. Let's, let's get some proof. So he's talking about this Travis Walton. Fire in the sky. If you ever seen the moose, I'll see on my channel I'll bring you straight raw facts. Not this speaking shit out of thin air. And I know what the fuck I saw last night. Alright, so you got you got this movie called Fire in the Sky, right?
They can't. They, they don't want to admit it. So you got that movie right here. This movie called Fire in the Sky, right? Let's click on some images, right? I'm quite sure a lot of you all seen this movie. You can watch on YouTube for free. So this is this is a movie called Fire in the Sky, right? Travis Walton, right? And they, they put shit up here like this, right? Look, this is what they show you. This is the this is the uh, re uh, edited version of what he experienced in his uh, about him being abducted. So you got shit like this. This is what they show you in the movie. They show you shit like this, right? Stuff like this. This is what they portray in the movies. Okay, but this is a scare tactic. They don't want to admit that what, what this man saw were black people. They give you shit like this. Okay? They got they gotta put shit out like this. Give me one second. Uh let me go to Google real quick one more time. I don't know who they think they're trying to fool. You can't, you can't fool this nigga right here. You ain't fooling me. I'm not no dumbass. I know how to piece this shit together. You try to show somebody else. All right. So if you, if you sit, I mean, just watch the movie on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Watch the movie. You can watch it for free. Uh, let me see. Let me go back here. Right, they, they they try to spook you out. They try to scare you. Right? This is like they, they're they're so called considered a gray. Right? But this is this is this is this is Hollywood bullshit. So, Travis Walton. You want to see what Travis Walton looked like? This is the man right here. This is Travis Walton. This is the so. This is the white man who was so called abducted. Who was abducted, right? But he said, and he said, "quote that he didn't. He didn't see no shit like this. He saw human beings." So let's go here. Let's go back. So Travis Walton said, "Travis Walton, human, fire in the sky, 1997 August." Condensed version, right? So he said he was he, he said he was standing in the doorway, right? Let me go back. We need some visuals. We got to put this in in perspective. So let's go here. Let me see. I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm trying to pick a good one. Trying to pick a good one. Let me see. Uh, we just we we'll click this one, right? So we know that this thing has has a ramp, right? And it, and it come, and the the, uh, the ramp comes down. And he said he saw people standing in the he saw human beings standing in the damn doorway. He didn't say he saw some fucking grays. He saw he saw human beings. What human beings? Black people, Negroes. Let's keep on going. The case of Sidney Patrick, Patrick, a 45-year-old private pilot who once served in the U.S. Air Force, was taken aboard one of the, one of the wheels on January 30th, 1965. During this encounter, Patrick reportedly approached the ship where he was met by human beings. That's another one. Timothy Good, his book, Need to Know UFOs, the Military and Intelligence, provides an excerpt of Pat Patrick's encounter reported to the United States Air Force personnel, and he says, By our own standards, I would, I would say they all look between 20 to 25 years. Oh, very young, perk, energetic, and intelligent looking. 
Their features were similar to ours. Wait a minute. Hold up. And we know that, that black people, that white people come from black people. And he says that their features look similar to ours. Well, that means that he's a white man. And he says that he, their features look similar to ours. So these are black folks that he's seeing. But he can't come out in his report and say it. He says, there was only one feature I noticed that would differ from, uh, from us greatly. And that, and that was their faces came to a point much more than ours. They had sharp chins and noses. Their skin was somewhat, their skin was somewhat of an American, uh, of an of a, uh, Armenian color. Their eyes were all very dark. There was nothing unusual about them. Their brightness, depth, or luminance. All of them were wearing two-piece suits, slip-on type, light bluish, white in color, and no bottoms or zippers that I can see. So he says that these people had somewhat of a uh, Armenian type. So let, let's let's type in Armenian. Let's see what color are the uh, Armenian people. So we're going to talk about some uh, uh, Aboriginal Armenians. And we're going to click, we're going to type in Aboriginal. This shit ain't pre-recorded. I'm doing this shit right now. So you got the, this is what the, this is, here's your, uh, Aboriginal Armenians. This. Okay. Here you go. This is what he's saying. He's saying on white people, he's saying black people. But let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. In a video recorded interview with Kur uh, Kursan, uh, he's a Russian president, region of uh, Kal uh, Kalmykia, Share details about his famous UFO abduction from his Moscow apartment on September 17, 1985. Here, he described as a circular UFO whose occupants abducted him. He says, quote, they are people like us. They have the same mind, the same vision. He says, quote, I talk with them. Even though he was able to communicate clearly with, with the people aboard the, this wheel, he stated that they were able to, commu to communicate with him telepathically. Another capability that Elijah Muhammad shared about these angels, or angels nothing but men, men and women. During his interview with the Guardian, the rest, this Russian president stated that, quote, they put a spacesuit on me, told me many things, and showed me around. They wanted to demonstrate that UFOs exist. Okay? Now, Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. And we're gonna and all this stuff is quoted. All this stuff is, I mean, all, all this stuff is referenced. Right here at the bottom. Okay? Now, let's go here. And on page 55, it says here that um Different from the first and reports given by those who experienced UFO encounters, Hollywood and the media have done their part to sen uh, sensationalize UFOs and the people who pilot them. Many of the characteristics attributed to, to aliens and UFOs seen in the movies can be traced back to fictional characters described in, in earlier literature. In 1893, the fiction writer H.G. Wells wrote an article entitled Man of the Year Million where he describes humanity being transformed into a race of gray-skinned beings who became stunted with big heads. He writes the following, quote, 
gray hands they have. So, so this, so this is where your gray alien shit come from. When this, when this white man, H.G. Wells. So, so when you see shit like this, so we going to the on my channel, we go to the root of the goddamn plot. On the, the we going to the root of the plot. Let's go to the root. Where this shit come from? These, these fucking grays. Cause all my life, I ain't, I ain't never seen a goddamn gray alien. So you see shit like this. This is this is bullshit. White boy, somebody being abducted by gray aliens. Bullshit. You, your ass is being abducted by black people. Negroes. We gonna keep this shit raw. I don't know who the fuck you think you fooling. You ain't fooling this nigga right here. So, when you, I mean, let me read it. I'm a, what I read, you observe. You depict what I'm reading. So, H.G. Well, this white man came with this bullshit, Grays, and he says, Gray hands they have. Uh, e enormous brains, soft liquid, soulful eyes. Their whole muscular system, uh, system, their legs, their abdomens are shriveled to nothing. A dangling, degraded pendant to their minds. You see that? You see that sound familiar? Nearly eight years later, in his book, 1901, The First Man in the Moon, Wells described people from the moon as having gray skin, big heads, and large black eyes. These fictitious characteristics have, have an uncanny resemblance to what Hollywood and the media have continuously promoted as great aliens from UFOs. You see that? Um, even though this image has a known origin in make in make believe, those who deliberately mislead the people to use it to deter the public from the human reality associated with the with the wheels. This explains why the uh, this explains why the controlled media attributes attributes UFO activity to to fictitious graves. The same entertainment industry that has swayed people to believe in fictitious werewolves, ghosts, and monsters under the bed has swayed people to believe that little gray aliens control man-made planes. You see that? So this is bullshit. This white man, H.G. Well, let's look this, let's look this white man up. Let's look this man up. Who the who the fuck is this? Waste H.G. Well. This shit should piss you off. Now, if you don't like my both my, my vocabulary, get off my channel. This ain't for you. So we going to H.G. Well. H. G. Wells. This is H.G. Well. This white man. Right? H.G. Wells. Okay? This is him. And where's this white man from? Born in, he was born in England. British. Okay? He walked he wrote the Island of Dr. Monroe, the time machine, the war, war of the worlds. You know what I'm saying? This is where this shit comes from. Now, uh, if I have to make a part two, I will. Most likely, I'm, I'm going to end up making a part two. But we ain't got time to play games, man. I'm not I'm not here to gain a popularity contest. Okay? Um... One second. Okay, so let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So what we just talked about, he wrote he wrote them books called The Time Machine. You know what I'm saying? The first man in the moon, you know, that bullshit. Now, let's go here. Okay, 
One second. I showed you in my last in my last videos that black folks was uh, building spaceships fifty thousand years ago, twenty five thousand years ago. So just think about this, people. Let's go back to the goddamn Bible. Just think. If Moses was supposed to be born in 1525, 1530 B.C., and the, uh, the, the, uh, the Egyptians were building, uh, uh, got caught on their walls, spaceships, 50,000 B.C. to 25,000 B.C., and it says that Moses was leading the children of Israel across the desert or whatever, in the wilderness, and he saw a cloud by day and fire by night, uh, just think to yourself, well, who, who did Moses actually see? And his so-called, the theory is he saw a spaceship. Who was in these spaceships that he seen? See, that's the thing. You niggas don't think. Now, let's go here to another account. Okay? Let's go into another account. And we're going to go here under the section of... Uh, We're going here under the section of, uh, right here, brothers from another, okay? And we're going to go right here. It says, unbeknownst to most, many reported UFO encounters have confirmed disconnection to black people. Um, one of the earlier yet, yet less known encounters involved two Caucasian sisters, Betty and uh, Helen Mitchell who claimed to have numerous encounters with the occupants of the wheel-shaped UFOs in the late 1950s. Um, this is what they say. They say, quote, um, While in the coffee shop, we were approached in a very, 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 very man, uh, manly way by two gentlemen dressed, dressed in gray suits who managed to interrupt into our private conversation. As they spoke to us, we found that they were from a huge mother crab orbiting the planet Earth, and that their names were Ellen and Zealous. They told us of the reasons why the space people were coming to Earth, and that they were here to guide Earth along the lines of brotherhood and science. Um, let's go here, and we're going right here. On page 189, it says that the association of the wheels with darker people gives another reason why world powers have uh, secretive UFO concerns, which is why many have never heard of the UFO sightings near Aerial School on September 16, 1994. Here, does the school teach, uh, here, does the school children ages 5 to 12 of various ethnicities Witness one of the most evident, yet seldom talked about UFO encounters. This evident, this event occurred in rural Zimbabwe during recess when 62 school children witnessed a circular UFO land, a, a, a circular UFO land behind the land behind trees near the near their playground. From this crowd, short black men were seen with straight black hair. One of them came out relatively close to the play playground before going back to the uh, circular civilly uh, crowd. The children describe these people as wearing fitted outfits, which is common commonplace among incredible UFO encounters, with very dark skin. One of the schoolgirls who witnessed the encounter said that she felt that God was coming. Whether she understood it or not, those planes and the people associated with them are indeed practical evidence of God's presence in the world. Little did those children know that they witnessed tangible signs of a realistic supreme being. Strangely, there have been reports of UFOs in, this, in disguise over Zimbabwe only two, on, uh, only two days before. Now, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about this event right here. UFO 
1994, 62 children encountered aliens. Zimbabwe. They ain't encountered no damn so-called aliens. These are black people. Let's click on it. Let's see what the white, let's see what the white woman got to say. There's something about talking with, you know, a group that has collectively experienced the same thing um, that is just more convincing and seems more legitimate. In the case where we spoke with young children who had experienced a visitation from two UFOs and the two beings who had hovered over their playground during recess, this was at a small secondary school outside Zimbabwe, outside Harare in Zimbabwe. And 60 children at recess have seen these two UFOs hover, two alien beings come out. And I even remember how one little girl described it to me. She said, it was as if they were kind of floating above the grass towards us, hopping across the grass towards us. And in this case, um, I remember John's voice very specifically as he asked one little girl. And these were very disciplined, sort of post-colonial, little children, um, different races with braids, very well spoken. And John said, well, what would you call these beings that you saw? And she'd say, I'd call them aliens. I'd call them alien beings. In September 1994, over 60 children from this school in the suburbs of Harare, Zimbabwe, witnessed several objects landing and two beings coming out. Just over two months later, John and Dominique came to the scene to work with the children, their parents, and the teachers still suffering from shock. John, who essentially specialized in child psychiatry, devoted a great deal of time to interviewing the children. Something scared you, is that right? Yes. What, what scared you? The noise. What noise? The noise that we heard in the air. You heard a noise in the yes. air? What was it like? Like a roar or a buzz or a hum or what kind of a noise? It was like someone was blowing a flute. It was scaring myself. Scary because you saw something yourself? Yes. I saw little objects hovering. It was quite big actually, and then there was little ones all around it. We saw something above us and then we quickly ran to the log to the logs and we saw a silver silver thing and we saw a man standing against it. What was it really feel like when he was looking at you? I felt scared of it. You felt scared? What was scary about it? Well, I felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. Did you see the eyes? What did you call a scarlet person? Did you see the eyes? Because I've never seen such a person like that before. Because I've never seen such a person like that before. Person. Did you see the eyes? Person. What did they look like? They were um, things like that. Where was the pointy part? Was the pointy part in here or was the pointy part out there? Up there. And what was the feeling when you looked at the eyes? Um, it was scary. Mm -hmm. And what, scary why? What made it scary? The eyes looked evil. Evil? And what was evil about? Say what you mean by evil. It, it, it looked evil because it was just staring at me. With what? Staring at you as if what? As if to do what? As if it wanted to come and take us. As if it wanted to come and take you. That was the feeling you got? That it wanted you to go with it? Did you feel like you wanted to go with it? No. Let's fast forward some of this. And now they're interviewing the... Both of them running. One was running um, in the trees, and the other one was running, running across the ship. Because there were also trees here. Mm -hmm. The eyes were, were like more pointed as they came in toward the center of the yeah. head, is that? No, mostly here. And this was all black. All black. And you made pupils. Did they actually have pupils? Or yes, was the it... Pupils were white. What? The pupils were white like that. Were you still white in the center? Yes, yes. Was he near the, uh, the silver object, or was he far from no, no. On top of the silver object. Okay. And, um... Okay, let's stop right there. Let's keep on going. These are black people, man. These are black folks. Come on now.
the, the, the gig is up. This shit is about to come to a fucking end. Let's, go, let's read another one. So I say to that, with all the red tape, this is on page 190, with all the red tape associated with disclosing information about UFO sightings, some formerly military government workers have used radio broadcasts to anonymously share information that would otherwise bring trouble to them. Some nasty, some nationally uh, syndicated radio programs have become a hotbed for UFO reports. While some calls and reports are clearly outlandish, there tend to be some accounts that convey a sense of cred- credibility. One caller who was simply identified as Charles from Echo Park, California, described himself as a 60-year-old former veteran, aerial vet, who now has a red of uh, who now has a red file, quote, web a red file. He narrated what he believed is the reason behind the UFO government, UFO investigation cover up. Charles, whose voice connotated that of a of a Caucasian male, disclaimed what he claimed to have witnessed during the nineteen eighties. It says while on a US US four Air Force base, three cigar shaped spaceships were sighted. One of the ships what she described as an over mile long landed on this base. Listen to this. Several hundred young black men came out the back of the craft standing in military style ranks. When describing what he saw, Charles explained, quote, this particular race that landed those ships and that are seen in these huge cigar shaped ships, they are a black race. And they look like African Americans. What? Let me read it again. He said, This particular race that landed those ships and that are seen in these huge cigar shapes, that are, they are a black race and they look like African Americans. Who are African Americans? Negroes. He continued that they had a look about them as though, quote, they had never been conquered. Much to the surprise of George Knapp, the radio announcer, George continued that while on America's military base, these impugned black men were said to have met with unnamed U.S. commanders. Charles even suggested that Ronald Reagan, U.N. address, where he encouraged humanity to band together against a common, quote, alien enemy, was in reaction to this encounter at a U.S. Air Force base. While this research did not assume that Charles' account is fully credible, it, it does stand to reason that such a, an account would not be too far-fetched. After all, the U.S. government has, on several occasions, officially denied and lied about the UFO encounters and the reality of this phenomenon because of its, because of its, connection, it, because of, because of its connection to the darker people of the Earth. Now, go back and watch my Videos on the predator. These are black people, man. Negroes. He said these these people, these race of people got off that ship, and he said it's like African Americans. African Americans. Now, there was another incident that took place called the Battle of Los Angeles, Battle in the Sky, 1942. You can you can read about that. I mean, you can you can look that up on your own. Okay. So this book is entitled um, "UFOs in the Nation of Islam." Now, let me tell you what happened to me last night. Okay. So as I'm about to get ready to leave last night, my job. It's about. It's like 11.30 at night, right? You know what I'm saying? It's like 11.30 at night. Give me one sec. When I, when, I, when I saw last night, I said, I ain't no one in the world. I'm, a, I'm imagining this shit. So I'm believing, I'm, I'm about to get rid of it. So my car, my truck is parked in the back of my work facility, right? You know what I'm saying? And I go outside to warm my car, because I'm based out in, I'm based out in Chicago, okay. And all my life, I've never seen a so-called UFO. 
I say this gotta be some, that's gotta be some made up shit. I ain't never seen that shit before. Well, last night, it last night, I I saw it. The stars was out. I saw an airplane go past. So as I'm as I'm as I'm uh warming my car, I'm walking around on the on the uh, opposite side to go back into my facility. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's cold outside. As I'm as I'm approaching the door, I'm looking. I want to know how you see something out of your uh at the at the corner of your eye. I look. I say, what the what the fuck was that? And I I look. And I said, no, that, that's not because there was a bunch of stars out. I said, no, nah, that wasn't no shooting star I just saw. The thing was, the the, the uh, what I saw was it was a white it was a white light, and the way it was going, it's like I, I was able to view it. It's like it had slowed down for me, and then it's like pretend like an airplane's about to get a land on a on a di- diagonal diagonal angle. You know what I'm saying? Like it's about to get a crash into something. And I said to myself, was that a, was that just a, uh, was that a shooting star? I said, hell no, that was no that, that was no damn shooting star. Shooting stars don't look like stars don't don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So then I make a phone call, and as I'm on the phone, I see the same shit. But instead, instead of it like it's about to get to land. It went, it went in the opposite direction, going up. And I saw it clear as day. I said, I know what the fuck that is. That's us. I wasn't hallucinating. I wasn't on drugs or nothing. I know what the fuck I saw. I just didn't have my phone out to record the shit. Because it, it caught me by surprise. It caught me off guard. Like, my man, what the fuck was that? And I broke down the tear. I said, what the? I said, nah, man. I wasn't no shooting star, man. I know a lot of people come on my channel and say, oh, that oh, was a demon. Get the fuck out of here. I'm no goddamn demon. I know what I saw. I went home and told my wife. I say I saw something tonight. You probably won't believe me. She like, what you see? I say it was a bunch of stars out last night, and I saw a UFO back to twice, back to back, in the same area. She said, what you saw some aliens? I said, if you want to, if that's what you want to call them, but they ain't no damn aliens. I'm talking about. People, the shit was clear as goddamn day. I'm not making this shit up. I know what I saw. My mind, my eyes not playing tricks with me. That shit was clear as day. I said to myself, that's a big coincidence that I put this this uh, video out um, um Marvin the Martian the day before, and then the next day, I see this shit happen the next day? Come on now. Is that a coincidence or what? Come on now. So you can you can click and comment below. Let me know what you think. I know what that was. I know what it was. I know who it was. See, this is the thing, people. We are playing catch up. We are in the past. We playing catch up. Our ancestors are in the future. Now, I would highly advise you to watch this movie right here. This movie right here, matter of fact, let me do something real quick. Um, let's do something real quick. Do something real quick. It's a movie you need to watch. It's called Interstellar. If you watch that movie, you will see clear as day that that movie is talking about Negroes, black people. It ain't talking about white folks. The white folks they don't have the uh, um, they don't have the melanin, they don't have the carbon to go outside the so-called atmosphere to these other planets because they're not they're not there. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. Now listen to this. I used to manage. He's confirming. What, listen to what he says. He's gonna confirm everything I've been saying. People that they got in the news talking about they going to malls. It's an idiotic way of being able to play with your subconscious. Because our people are the type of people we want to be. We don't want to be left behind. We want to be like we follow. Every, we want to integrate with everybody. You understand what I'm saying? So. The thing is, when they do stuff like that, and when I, when I saw when I saw last night, it it wasn't no airplane, it didn't have any fumes, any uh 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 fumes like a like a film trail behind it. No, that thing was all white. It was like it shot into another uh, another realm, another dimension, and then it came back out, and I saw it clear as day. I said, oh, "There it go again, clear as day." First time I saw it, it, it seemed like it was about to get ready to crash, crash into something, but it disappeared, and then it shot back up out of where it came from, in the opposite direction, going back up into the sky. Clear as day, I saw it. They keep you looking up because they're doing something over here. There's something bigger going on. These white people wouldn't last a second on the moon. They ain't never been to a damn moon. You understand what I'm saying? They wouldn't last a second on the moon because of the gravity. Right. And the chemicals that's in the air that they can't see. They have trillions upon trillions right. of molecules up there that will kill them if they come within a certain distance of these molecules. It will kill them. And these molecules is more hotter than the sun. And they are teeny molecules. They have sounds up there that kill these Europeans. We can go up there. We've been there. We've been there. What do you think that face on Mars is? Black people. You heard the white man said, Norman Bergeron, Remax Society, what that book said, it's black people on the moon. Got off that damn spaceship. But the thing is, they're trying to detract us from that. Just like in the movie, they say, the aliens make aliens look bad. There's nothing wrong with the alien place. We the fucking aliens. We the extraterrestrials. Because we have that extraterrestrial DNA. Uh, we uh, have extra everything he's saying, I've been, I'm saying it in my videos. Everything, all of it. We the aliens, we the extraterrestrials. Our DNA is not of this world. Because we're not of this world. And they lose their thymus gland at the age of eight. You understand what I'm saying? White people don't, and the thymus gland regulate sex. So they lose that at the age of eight. That's why they animals. That's why they sleep with animals. That's why they pick an animal up the street before they pick you up. Because they have an animal nature. And I'm not being funny or being racist because I can't be racist. I can't be a racist because I don't have enough economic power physically. Now, spiritually, I do. But physically, I, have, I don't have enough economic power to move a nation as far as a population control thing to be a racist. I'm not the initiator of race, but since it's on the table, like I tell my queen all the time, other people, I'm going to play with it. And our people, oh, you racist and that. Well, guess what? They shooting down our black boy. You think they give a damn about you? Well, that's some white people. You're right, it's some white people, but what the hell you think they talking about when they go in our house at night? The same people you taking up for. They call you all types of niggas. They don't give a damn about you. So, you know, now, that's why now you see a lot of interracial uh, communication going on. Yeah, because the, because the uterine walls of the white woman is getting recessive. They can't, the egg is not holding on the uterine walls. And so now you got them way, I was on a radio station, I don't know if you heard, I was on a radio station a few weeks back, and you got all these movie stars, mm -hmm. Angeline Jolie, who is one of the Queen of England's family bloodline members, you know what I'm saying, going over to Africa, and they're taking these children, and they're coming back here, but you got children here who's homeless, mm -hmm. so what they're doing is they crossbreed with their children, but what they're doing is, like I said, you can get the, Elijah Muhammad said, you can get the recessive from the dominant, but you can't get the dominant from the recessive. So no matter how many of us you sleep with, you're still going off the earth. Because your genetics is too recessive. It's too inferior. That's right. A white person ain't going to never give birth to a black person. It's too inferior. That's right. A white person ain't going to never give birth to a black person. Go back and watch my all four parts of my videos, making the white man. White people come from black people. We are their mothers and fathers.
Without us, there would be no them. That's why they try to say the common ancestor is a fucking monkey or ape. But they don't want to admit that the common ancestor is us. Never, but we give birth to yellow, brown, white, albino. They ain't nothing but albinos. Albinos. So if you, got, if you follow somebody who's a camp or if you follow anybody that's telling you that uh, 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 Esau's a white man, Esau's an Arab, that's, look, we beyond that bullshit, let's get down to brass tacks. These white people are genetic mutations. They come from us. They're mutants. What do you think X-Men was all about? Mutants. Watch X-Men Part 3. They didn't want to take the cure. The cure to become human. They are genetically engineered from the last stage of the albino. That's why they have weak bones. That's why when they die, they have to be buried right away. Because they, de- they, deteriorate, they deteriorate right away. The air can't stand them. The sun can't stand them. When we die, the sun keeps us sustained. When the body dies. Not we, when the body dies. Let's get that correct. So we wrapped up in all this flesh, which is the matrix. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we need to understand. Once we figure out, once we know, once we know who we are, and I ain't talking about where we come from, we Africans, black power, that's fine to have that type of esteem about yourself. But the thing is, we got to know who we really are on a spiritual level. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it plays with your subconscious. It's an influence that's mechanism. So you can say, oh, since movie stars, because you look up to, a lot of us look up to these movie stars. Not me, but you know, they look up to these movie stars and they say, okay, well, since they sleeping with a white woman, right, man, I'm going to go do it too. That's cool. I mean, just like the old Jay-Z, if Jay-Z was to walk around today with a blue damn pocketbook, I mean a, a pink pocketbook, they gonna do this shit too. Because it's all influence. Subconscious. We psychologically fucked up. That's, I can't put it no other way. You know, so, you know, the thing is, these, these television shows, I don't look at them a lot, but when I do, I don't do it for anything. Just like the Nightmare, Nightmare on Amsterdam, that's old. But now they just, I just now, like I said, I was now done the research, and these people who's taking the melatonin pill that comes from us, not waking up. I talked about that in my other video. They're taking melatonin, selling melanin, three hundred fifty-three dollars, three hundred fifty-three dollars. Where they sleep? What the fuck going on? Because you cannot cross over into the dream world. The dream world is actually our reality. This is their reality. Because this is a process. Anything that is an illusion is processed. That's why they make processed food, because they don't understand natural stuff. And the only thing they come close to being a pyramid is the food pyramid. And that shit ain't no good for you. That's subconscious. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But you, and, and we only have to put a hand on it. The magic is happening to us. You know, this, we are Osiris. We are Isis. We are Ra. It's a myth, but it's also a real self and your lower self. Fine. Because you can't, good can exist without evil. You get what I'm saying? That's right. 93 million miles away. I can feel the sun. You mean to tell me I can't feel hell? And if I'm going to hell as a spirit, how the hell am I going to feel the fire burning my ass? If I ain't got no type of human characteristics of great into us, a, a dumb uh, psychological foundation. I'm bringing straight raw facts that cannot be refuted. It can't be refuted. It can't be refuted. Let me see. One, let me give you one more. I got five minutes left. Let me see.
one second. Peace.